Hello, I'm Gordon Edwards from Canada. I'm the president of the Canadian Coalition for Nuclear Responsibility, and I'm here with Wolfgang. Yeah, hello, my name is Wolfgang Pomlin. I'm a freelance journalist from Germany and came here to Hong Kong to talk about nuclear energy. So Wolfgang, uh, I'm very interested in uh, hearing more about what's happening in Germany because people are wondering, you know, with this phase out uh, of, of nuclear power, whether this is going to mean like a lot more import of nuclear electricity from France maybe, or perhaps burning more of that very dirty soft coal and therefore adding to the greenhouse problem. Is, is, is this a problem in Germany? How, how is the government and the people of Germany going to deal with that? Well, uh, let me first talk about the export and import of electrical energy. Actually, Germany has been for more than 10 years now an export, a netto exporter, that is, oh. that we are exporting more electrical energy than we get. But you should know that there is a lot of transaction or, or transfer of electrical energy between countries in, in Europe all the time. So the, the, the interesting question is the, the balance sheet. And on the balance sheet, uh, Germany is still exporting uh, electrical energy. Also last year, uh, but you know that we shut down 8 or out of 17 uh, nuclear reactors last year in March after the Fukushima accident. Well, how is this possible? If you, if you have 17 reactors and you shut down half of them, 8 reactors at one shot, how can you possibly still have a surplus of electricity? It sounds contradictory. Renewable. That's it. Renewable. We are developing wind industry, solar industry. We really had a boom in, in solar uh, energy in the last two years. We have now something like uh, 25 gigawatt of capacity of solar power. We could add, if the government would, wouldn't stop it, but we could add another seven this year in solar power only. But wind energy is also something like 30 gigawatt now in, in capacity. And we, we end up that we have now about 20% of our uh, uh, electricity consumption is coming from the renewables. Wow, that's not capacity, that's actual electricity used is at 20%, yeah. 20% yeah, yeah. renewable. Yeah, yeah, that's sure. That's pretty sure. impressive. Uh, the capaci capacity is even bigger, but the, you know the problem is that mm -hmm. not all the time wind and not all the time sun. Like yeah, that. I understand that uh, at the time of the Fukushima accident uh, in Japan, I heard that uh, that Germany already had more solar photovoltaic installed than all of the six reactors at Fukushima Daiichi in terms of capacity. So that's pretty impressive. Yeah, well, you should be a little bit careful in comparing capacity because uh, solar uh, in Germany is just for good for 900 hours a year uh, of producing electricity. So you, you need more solar capacity to outweigh uh, the capacity of a nuclear plant or a coal plant. But, but it's true, I mean, it's true. We have, uh, especially during the uh, the noon time, we have so much solar energy now, usually in Germany. And you know, Germany is quite up for, far up in the north. I mean, uh, even farther, uh, or like, like Canada, we really, really far up in the north. States like the United States or China, they have much better condition for solar energy. I see. You see. But, but uh, let, let me tell you something about the other issue about climate change. You ask about the soft coal. Yes. It, it's true, uh, and it's a, coal is a big problem in Germany. Germany is uh, one of the biggest uh, soft coal or lignite producers in, in the world. And about 22-25% of our electricity is coming from burning lignite, which is very bad because uh, it's the worst fossil fuel uh, in terms of CO2 production. Uh, but it's not really true that, that now more uh, soft coal is burned. It, it was a little bit last year, but it had been more about 10 or 15 years ago. It all, a renewable so it's going down, the use of coal is going down? The use of coal uh, is going down, but it's, of course, uh, coal is a big business in Germany, so it, it's, a, it's a fight. I mean, we are fighting new uh, coal plants as well as we are fighting nuclear power plants. So. Okay. 
Well, of course, the sun only shines in the daytime, That's true. and so uh, you, you really can't uh, depend upon your electricity supply on solar energy. So this is a little bit of a pipe dream, isn't it? No, not, not really. Uh, I mean, what, what you need is a different kind of, of grid system, and you need a storage. Uh, uh, you, you can't, well, yeah, as you said, the solar is not shining 24 hours a, a day. So uh, this needs to be built. And uh, also, we have some uh, pump storage already, but this is used now for the nuclear industry and for the coal industry, so that they can. Uh, for that they are able to uh, run their uh, uh, power plants, their, their nuclear reactors, uh, 24 hours a day. They, in, in the night, they are using the electricity from the nuclear power plant to pump up the, the water storage so that they can release the energy uh, during the day. But if we could use this storage for a renewable, then we, uh, that would be a step further. Mm -hmm. so. And what about the wind picture? I suppose that the wind, uh, in some way, makes up for the, uh, the, uh, you know, the fact that the sun only shines during the day. The wind, at least, blows more often, uh, not only in the daytime. And what about other renewables? Do you have, like, how is the renewable mix stacking up in Germany? And how do they work together? These renewables. Well, we have, uh, as you said, wind and so on. We have also uh, hydropower, but, uh, which is about something like 3% of our electricity production. And then we have uh, quite some uh, biomass burning, actually. M mainly it's, it's biogas. It's uh, diverted all over the country, in, in the countryside, in, in, in smaller and, and, and bigger plants. And, uh, Biogas would be a, a good uh, idea for a backup for wind and solar, but uh, that, that needs to be planned, which mm -hmm. is not done. Uh, I mean, one of, one of our many problems is this uh, ideology, uh, ideology of free market. Uh, people think every, everything has to be liberalized and organized by the market, but electricity production is a very sensible thing which just has to be planned. Mm -hmm. So it, it doesn't make much sense so, to leave it to the free market. It, it would be better to have a non-profit uh, company which would at, at least organize the private companies mm -hmm. in a way to save uh, uh, for the needs of, of, of uh, all of us. Huh? Mm -hmm. So this 20%, do you think that, uh, that you've kind of hit the peak here with 20% electricity coming from the renewable sources? I mean. Once you've, once you've installed so much wind, uh, you can't just keep on going forever, can you? Oh, nearly forever. Uh, now, we are, we are not at all uh, at, at the peak. Uh, just to give you an example, Denmark is, has 20% of its electricity consumption from wind only. From right? wind only? From wind only. I was wow. talking about wind, solar, biogas in Germany, but Denmark doesn't. And they reached that point already uh, 10 or 15 years ago, and then they got a liberal conservative uh, government which sought the, develop the further development. Mm. So they could have been much better by now already. I noticed that when the Siemens uh, company announced that they were getting out of the nuclear field, which is a big shock to me because yeah. Siemens has always been a big player in the whole world uh, in nuclear field. But uh, the CEO of Siemens announced not only that they were getting out of nuclear, um, but that they were fully, uh, fully in agreement that the German government could meet its goal of uh, uh, becoming renewable uh, by 2020 sufficiently to more than compensate for the shutdown of all the nuclear reactors. And he said that he believed that uh, the development of renewable energy is really the the engineering challenge of the 21st century. I thought that was an interesting, an interesting remark coming from one of the giants of ah. the past of the nuclear industry to yeah. say that. Yeah, well, I mean, he's only, uh, or he's uh, leading a private company which is, wants to make profit. Sure. Now, obviously, you can't make so much profit with nuclear power anymore. And uh, Siemens now is going much into uh, wind, actually, though, uh, they are producing wind plants and uh, selling them uh, mo mainly abroad. Um, Siemens has the problem, it's a huge corporation. So it's not, 
they are not able to 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 deal with uh, with people buying one or two or three wind plants. But actually, this is the interesting thing in Germany that that the wind industry is very diverse in in ownership. It's no no centralization. You have a, a lot of uh, I'd say just citizens or corporation, citizen corporations owning several uh, wind plants. So, and this is also a very nice and interesting thing because in that way, uh, a lot of money is kept uh, in the places, in the especially in the community and in, in the countryside. This mm. is a very good thing, you know. And in the industrialized country, like I guess in Canada. Canada, it's much the same. You have the problem that the countryside get, it gets mm. somehow dis, uh, de developed way behind the, right. the centers. And this is a way of, of developing the, the more, I mm -hmm. say, more even the, the, the country as well. Yeah. But um, so the, you, you, you were asking something about the, the, uh, the aims, how far we can get. Uh, well, the official aim is to have 30% of renewable or 35% in, in 2020. And for sure, we can, uh, uh, the renewable will be able to, uh, how to say, to, to replace, replace the, the nuclear energy, which is fading out now. But uh, the official aim is to become 100% renewable by 2050. Oh, but if you go on, in, in the same speed as we are now doing now, then we could reach this uh, by 2030, mm -hmm. actually. But that so it's a lit. Uh, it's a lot of debate with coal industry. Yeah. Well, it's interesting to me because uh, in the nuclear field, um, you have you, you mentioned that it's hard to make a profit nowadays in the yeah. nuclear field. That's a very interesting comment, and it certainly seems to be true in North America because they're having to really invest tens of billions of government money in guaranteeing the loans that people need to get the capital to build these nuclear plants. Mm. The private markets will not touch it. They won't invest in it. So obviously they see it as a non-money-making operation. That's a very interesting point. One thing that I think people tend to overlook also is that not only does it cost a tremendous amount of money to build the infrastructure for the nuclear at the beginning, yeah. But also, when the plant is finished and you've already used up all the electricity, then you have a huge cost in taking it apart again, yeah. and also sure. in managing the thousands and thousands of truckloads of radioactive rubble that you have from the dismantling, as well as the long-term waste disposal. So, one thing that I think people in North America are realizing is that you're buying a lot of real problems for the future, which are going to cost a lot of money. Yeah. So that after you finish with this reactor, you still have to spend more money on it instead of investing in, in meeting people's needs. Yeah. Well, so much about cheap nuclear energy. In Germany, we are calculating that we will have to pay another 100 billion euro. It is something like uh, 1 trillion Hong Kong dollars, I think, uh, for dismantling the old plants and handling the waste. And out of that, you get no benefit. No, not at all. <laughs> not at all. Thank you very much. Thank you.